welcome to Sailing Britican. We help people take the exciting leap from living on land to becoming full-time live-aboard cruisers. Today we'll show you an easy way on how to fillet a mahi-mahi. Additionally, we'll go through all the kit we use on Britican to catch our fish. Simon and I are not big fishers. We have a very, very basic setup, yet we almost always catch a really nice fish. So fishing for cruisers is definitely not difficult. And for our Patreon supporters and our Britican Club members, they'll receive our checklist guide for fishing success, in addition to our super quick and easy mahi-mahi recipes. If you're not a Patreon supporter or a Britican Club member and want to benefit from our ongoing premium content, please see below. This mahi was caught while leaving Antigua and heading to the Caribbean island of Guadeloupe. It looks very rigid because we threw it in the fridge after putting him to sleep. It's a bull or male mahi-mahi, so it has what looks like an extended forehead. You start off by feeling for the skull and making an incision behind the gill and up along the top of the skull, and then horizontal along the forehead. Make small incisions at first, and then you'll eventually be able to hold the knife flat and cut horizontally along the fish. When doing it this way, you don't have to worry about gutting the fish. Mahi Mahi have ribs that are easy to cut through, so you'll be cutting down the length of the fish. It's important to note that not all fish can be filleted this way. Other fish have a much tougher bone structure and cutting through the ribs is not always possible. When filleting any fish, it's imperative to have a very, very sharp knife. See below for information on the knife that we use. When you get to the end, do not cut all the way through. You want to leave the skin attached as it will provide you with something to hold on to when cutting the skin off. Holding the knife as horizontal as possible, you cut between the skin and the flesh. You'll have to put a bit of pressure on the knife to make it slightly round down a bit. You then want to get underneath the ribs, cut them off, and discard. If all the skin didn't come off in one go, make an incision to get the cut started, and then just flip it over and carry on and do like you did before. Once the meat is rib and skin free, rinse it in salt water as this preserves the taste of the fish rather than using fresh water. You can also cut off any dark red bits known as the bloodline as this area can taste a bit fishy. And once the first side is done, you simply flip it over and you do the same thing. So once again, you start at the front of the mahi-mahi, feeling for the edge of the skull and working backwards, back behind the fin. Then turn the mahi-mahi around and make an incision along the top horizontally to carve out a piece that will be easy to hold and get the knife into. You have to slightly bend the knife down while cutting and you use the bones as a kind of guide. If you're having a hard time with the knife going all the way from the top of the fish to the bottom, you can just cut along the top of the spine halfway down and then flip the fish around and come up through the bottom area. Slicing horizontally, you carry along the length of the fish. And don't be harsh on yourself if you don't get all the skin off in one go. Filleting a fish is not a quick process. When there's skin still left on the meat, once again make some incisions to get the skin separated from the meat, 
flip it over and carry on as you have been doing before. While you're watching Simon fillet this second side, let me tell you that aside from catching barracuda and mahi-mahi, we also catch a lot of red snapper, sierra mackerel, wahoo, yellowfin, and blackfin tuna. Keep watching to see how we catch them. Let me tell you about the basic kit that we use to catch our fish. We have two fishing poles that are very similar. The reels are fairly inexpensive. We probably paid around $300 for them. For the past five years, we've had the best luck with squid lures. So we are not diehard fisher people. We put the reels and rods into our rod holder. We then make sure to have a line tied from the rod to the pole to ensure that we don't ever lose the pole. Once the poles are secure, we let out the line for a while and then leave it. Eventually a fish strikes and we reel it in. There's no patience necessary. We often forget we even have lines out. In addition to having a rod holder, a rod and reel and lure, we also have the following ready. A pole holder or a pillow for placement on your stomach. A gaff and or a net. A large bucket to put the head of the fish into when you kill it. A spray bottle of vodka or other alcohol. When you pour alcohol into the gills, it kills the fish instantly. A super sharp filleting knife. A large cutting board. And a glove to grab the line with your hands to help hoist the fish up if you're not using a gaff or net. Before I say goodbye, here are a few tips that we've learned along the way. Check the level of seaweed before you put your line out. This past year we've had quite a bit of trouble due to too much seaweed. That being said, big fish, especially mahi-mahi, hang out under the seaweed. The trick is to drag your line near the seaweed and not through it. Number two, wet the aft deck or wherever you're pulling the fish onto with salt water. If it's wet to begin with, it's easier to wash off any blood and scales. Number three, Designate one cutting board for fish filleting only. No matter how hard you work at washing it, it will still smell like fish. We keep ours outside as it would stink up our galley. Furthermore, get a board that has a hole in it so you can tie a rope to it long enough to throw it overboard and pull it back out again. This is helpful when cleaning the board. You can also use the line to keep it tied to a space at the back of the boat. And our last tip is, if your fridge is large enough or you have a cooler with ice, place the whole fish in a bag. We actually use a Febreze bag as they smell nice, preventing the fish to smell up the fridge. It's much easier to fillet a fish when the boat is stationary. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed our practical, easy to follow instruction and tips for long-term cruisers, please like this video and subscribe to our channel to get notifications on new videos. And to keep these videos coming, please support us on Patreon or join our Britican Club. Both options provide premium content to help you get out and enjoy the live aboard cruiser sailing lifestyle. Information about both, in addition to links on resources used in the video, can be found below.